Hello everyone. Today we are talking about an interesting concept called crypto shredding. The idea for this video came from uh, one of my viewers in the comments and if you wish to have a topic covered by me, let me know in the comments to this video. We assume again uh, an individual, we <laughs> call him Bob, with certain characteristics. This individual Bob is a customer at a company. This company has three other customers. It's apparently not very successful, but uh, we'll deal with what we have. Now, under certain privacy regulations and data protection regulations, such as the European GDPR, but also several laws in the US, um, there are certain rights um, regarding data retention and limitations on data retention. Uh, the European GDPR, for example, has the right to be forgotten, meaning that a customer of a company can uh, send a mail to them, please delete all the records you have or all the personal data you have on me. And also the GDPR says that data processing should be um, not only legal and, and fair and transparent, but also that you should follow the principle of data minimization, meaning don't collect more data than you have. And if you have more data than you need or than, you, um, than the data subject agreed to, then you should delete this data. However, deleting data is, well, sounds simple, but there are several problems with that. Uh, I will shortly highlight two of those. The first problem is blockchain technology. Now, blockchain technology, as you know, or as you might know, um, means that every block uh, depends on the previous block. If you, I mean, this is an example from encryption, but the idea is the same. If you have uh, a block on the right side, for example, let's say Y2, this depends on the previous block, on Y1 or X1 rather. So if this gets altered or deleted or, well, deleted in this case, then you cannot derive Y2 anymore. And in blockchain, the whole idea rests upon the, the fact that no blocks in between are altered. That's why I can trust the latest block. And if blocks in between are deleted, because I have to, because of, you know, because of my of the rights of my data subject, then uh, obviously everything following that block is also not trusted anymore. This is a clear contradiction to the rights granted by the GDPR. Another uh, contradiction is backups. So if you follow cybersecurity uh, practices, then you backup very often and you backup uh, all your data and all the pers personal data you save, obviously. And these backups are usually distributed and they are run, let's say, every week or so. So you have multiple backups of your database, for example, the database we've seen before. Now, if Bob now says delete my record, what you have to do is you delete the record on the current database, obviously, but you also have to go through all the backups and query all these uh, databases on, on on your backups and delete Bob there. Now, obviously, if you only have four customers, this is a very quick thing to do. But if you imagine millions of customers, this is a very, very, uh, well, time consuming task. Therefore, this is also a problem which contradicts or which stands in conflict with certain rights granted by, for example, the GDPR. That's why crypto shredding um, well, the idea of crypto shredding has been introduced and I will quickly present the idea what it does and maybe some shortcomings as well. So we have our database of our four customers. What we do is we encrypt each of the entries individually. So each of these locks represent a, an individual key, like one key for Alice, a key for Bob, a key for Charlie, a key for Dave. So there is no universal key, but each of these are user um, specific keys. These keys are stored in another database, in the key database. This is obviously uh, stored at a different location than the database itself, which, uh, which you can see illustrated here. Now, if Bob now for some reason says, please delete my records, delete my personal data you have on me, um, instead of just taking the database and deleting his record, what you now do is you have, since you have Bob's record is encrypted with his encryption key, um, what you do is you delete the encryption key. You do not touch the record. So the record stays uh, in the database, but since the uh, decryption and encryption key, since the key is deleted, 
uh, you cannot access it anymore. Meaning you fulfilled uh, his request, you cannot access the data anymore, but you did not in fact delete it. What you also have to keep in mind is that the key database or the key list is also backed up. So you have to go through all the backups as well because you cannot afford to lose this uh, this key database because otherwise all your records um, you know, become unaccessible. So you have to go through a lot of databases again, but um, going through this kind of lists where you only have a username and a key is, is much faster and it's much easier to delete these kinds of uh, backups. Okay, so how do we now work with these databases? As I've said, the databases, well, the database is not encrypted. It can be encrypted, of course, but the idea is that each, each individual record is encrypted with a unique key. So what you would need to do in order to query this database is you would actually have to decrypt each row individually and then run the query and then maybe and then, you know, encrypt it again. This is not only tedious, but it's also very, very time consuming, obviously. And this is not very practical. This is something that can't be done uh, as of now uh, in any kind of practical amount of time. So there are certain ways to do this. I will present only one. Um, there are others and there's a link in the description of the video you can you can click uh, where there are other methods presented but this is I think the the most interesting one and also the most um, well realistic one I'd say in, in practice so we have our data analyst who wants to access a an encrypted database um, what now happens is there is a so-called cache builder this cache builder um, takes well obviously first the keys to decrypt the data and he gets the encrypted data from the encrypted database the cache builder then can obviously use this key to decrypt the records and then sends the decrypted so the plain text database to a cache database and this cache database can now be queried and uh, can be read and uh, so the data analyst doesn't have to decrypt any records themselves. This is the cache builder does this for him. However, if he wants to write anything, obviously he can't write in the cache because the cache never gets uh, fed back to the original database. If he has to write, he has to write on the actual database. And obviously he also needs the keys to do that. So this is um, a short um, schematic approach on how this could work in practice. I don't know how performant it really is, but um, this is the kinds of things you have to think about when you're dealing with encrypted well, databases, especially because encrypted databases are notoriously hard to work with because of performance issues. Now, one more thing um, regarding uh, maybe a security uh, topic uh, as well. Uh, if a fake Bob, so somebody who impersonates Bob, says to the company, delete my records, so delete Bob's, records um, if you want to be safe and this is just an, an idea um, from the article uh, linked uh, I don't know how practical it really is but this is an idea uh, just to show you what you can think about or what you have to think about when you implement these kind of things so he says delete um, Bob's records and so instead of deleting the key which we did earlier what we can do is we can encrypt the key so the key is now encrypted uh, with a key or with a passphrase um, which we don't know so we as the company we don't know the passphrase only Bob uh, knows the knows the key knows the passphrase uh, and he can now well say well we, we, we just sent him basically an, an email saying well we successfully deleted your records and he said well well you shouldn't have because I never said that and so okay well you know here's a passphrase um, which only you know, and uh, you can you can basically give us the key to to decrypt your key uh, in order to make your records uh, available again. Again, uh, this is just one idea um, how you could improve upon the concept uh, or, or upon the the crypto shredding in order to make it maybe more usable, but. Uh, crypto shredding itself is a very novel idea and I think uh, a lot of things have to be fleshed out in order to be really usable in in well in real world scenarios. 
that's it for this video thank you very much for watching uh, if you learned something if you enjoyed the video consider subscribing consider liking the video and I'll see you in the next